Well, welcome to this week's uh, Oxford Analytica r uh, review of the global political economy. And this week we're looking at Bosnia, where there's been a considerable violence uh, last week. Um, I'm Michael Taylor. I'm analyst for uh, Central Eastern Europe. And I have with me Dr. Othon Anastasakis, who's a fellow of St. Anthony's College and director of their Southeast European Studies Centre. So, Othon, um, why has Bosnia got itself back into the news again? What are the issues that people are so unhappy about? Well, it's, it's like a wake-up call. I mean, uh, we've been for a long time a bit complacent about it. Mm -hmm. We knew that there were problems, uh, and mostly uh, about how the state functions or about the three ethnic communities in particular that cannot um, deal with each other. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, this particular uh, period that we are going through, and uh, I mean, there were incidents, some incidents before, and it also is connected with what happened in June with the baby revolution and the registration of babies and how the mums and dads went and yeah. uh, revolted. That's kind again. of sort of street politics in a way, isn't it? People taking to the streets because the parties aren't really a good vehicle for them. Well, and the thing is that, you know, in, uh, there are two sides that you can see this, really. One, Bosnia as, f you know, finally a normal country as much as possible. Mm -hmm going in a kind of a post-ethno-nationalistic mm -hmm. um, agenda and dealing with citizens that actually have their own expectations and demands mm -hmm. from the state, their own grievances. Mm -hmm. So they go out in the street and they have to, um, to react on what's happening. And then there is the other dimension uh, that, you know, it's this country that is the most mm -hmm. problematic actually in the Western Balkans mm -hmm. in Europe and that doesn't function properly, yes. and that actually complicates it very, very much. Yes. So some of them, some of, you know, of, of, of the observers can say that, you know, this is like a Bosnian spring, mm. Mm. but some can say, you know, this is like the Bosnian disappointment. <laughs> so there are two ways that, yes. you know, you can actually see this. I mean, there, there is a country with enormous problems. They've got massive unemployment, the economy is going nowhere, and the, and the, the, the political system seems sort of dysfunctional. It doesn't seem to, to generate solutions to problems. And this, I think, is, is uh, the really uh, core of the matter because uh, we've always been, uh, I mean, by we, I mean the international community and even the, the you know, many of the people in, in the Balkans as well. The, the, the Bosnian, um, uh, the, the country has been approached through this kind of ethno-nationalist dimension mm -hmm. on how the three communities can work together, what you do with the Federation mm -hmm. versus Republika Srpska. Mm -hmm. You know, the Croats are now are also demanding gradually their own entity. Mm -hmm. So the whole focus has been on that, both from the EU as, as well from, from the elites in Bosnia, yeah. that there is this kind of problem that is basically ethnic. Yeah. But at the same time, what everybody has been ignoring, that this also country is part of the European environment, mm. and that um, the, you know, the, these are also citizens of a certain country, of a certain state. Mm. And this dimension, I think, has been completely neglected yeah. by looking at the other dimension and trying to address the other one. It's a bit unusual when it does have this kind of um, division into ethnic, um, almost tribes, as we like. But could you say that it's a kind of warning also, you call it a wake-up call, for other neighbouring countries in the, in the Balkans, or is it perhaps the worst of the Western Balkans? Well, on the one hand, one can compare between what's happening, for instance, with the, um, uh, with the reactions and, uh, and the protests in Croatia yes. or Slovenia mm -hmm. or Bulgaria. There are common issues there. Mm -hmm. They are um, against the governing elites. They are against um, corruption. Uh, against uh, uh, a state that is not functioning properly. So there is a commonality there that goes um, through the region uh, and um, there are comparative um, uh, elements. But there's also the uniqueness of Bosnia that complicates the story in that these are citizens of the Federation mostly. Mm -hmm. They are of Bosniak origin. So Republika Srpska and Serbs will, you know, rush and say, you know, what they're doing there, actually, they want to harm us. So there is this kind of dimension that complicates the story. That's right, because Bosnia is divided into these two entities, one of which is mainly Serb, called Republika Srpska, and the other one is um, Muslim and Croat, it's called Federation. And they don't get on at all, they seem to have minimal uh, relationship between, between each other. And meanwhile, they're trying to, the EU is trying to get it into join the EU, and you have this state which is not really a state, it's too um, 
almost um, ex-enemies from the war. So the war still has this big shadow. But what is the EU doing about, about this? What, you know, and what sort of leverage does it have? Well, that's the, the other question. Uh, and you're very right to put it. Because now in this, who is to blame for this? There are t two answers. One of them is that uh, there's the issue of um, local elites, mm -hmm. that um, the minute that the international community um, decided to become a bit more distant and leave the, 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 the elites to uh, you know, rule the country, then they're actually starting to go um, uh, downhill. Yeah. And there couldn't be any kind of uh, agreement, uh, cooperation. There wasn't a heavy handedness anymore from the international community. Um, uh, and the European Union, and that is actually what is, you know, to, to blame. So there are two um, um, issues there, the blame from the local elites and of the European Union, in particular because we are now realizing mm. that the stabilization and association process, which is for the whole Balkan, this is a package uh, uh, process and for the, the accession, is. exactly. The character inducing to behave themselves and reform and then become good enough to join the European Union. But it doesn't work for Bosnia. I mean, you know, this is the thing. And uh, we, we've seen actually the case of Serbian Kosovo, mm. which is an interesting example. Mm. When there was specific attention mm. given by the European External Action Service as well, and Catherine Ashton, and that was also tied mm. to the um, uh, carrot of accession, you know, there there managed to be some kind of an agreement uh, for the normalization. Again, in Bosnia, it's much more complicated because you've got this single state that needs to function, uh, and that is actually making it impossible. So maybe one of the, uh, of the th things that should be considered is whether there should be some kind of a special, um, special strategy, in particular for Bosnia, because what we ha had so far simply doesn't work. Okay. Well, maybe we'll see something, some movement next week when Catherine Ashton goes to Sarajevo, I understand, along with Stefan Fule, the Enlargement uh, Commissioner. Well, I think um, that'll be it for this week. Well, uh, this, this issue will carry on. You can continue to watch, look at our uh, coverage in the uh, Occidental's Daily Brief. And please come tune in again next week for our next review of the global political economy. Thank you.